Okay, so there's this new video been going around about this new awesome church in California. It's epic, apparently, called the Greater Purpose Church. Like, not just purpose, like, even better. It's like, ah, it's awesome. By uh, Christopher Van Hall is the pastor of this church. And apparently he's got a really interesting perspective on the Bible and the way his church orients itself and what they do. So let's check it out. Okay, well, I guess the number one difference is that this church serves beer during its service. You know, I don't think, I've not been to a church that ever condemned people for drinking alcohol in general anyway. But it's interesting, the concept of, you know, having a few cold ones and getting a buzz before you get the word. I, I, it's, I mean, that's kind of like a comedy warm show, right? You want the audience super loose so the congregation feels better. And you're like, hey, yeah, yeah, you know, you want to go to those donation boxes and really let it fly, guys. But that's interesting. Oh, okay. Another noticeable difference. I guess the, a lot of the donations go to a Planned Parenthood. So I guess we'll talk about that a little later, maybe? Okay. What would it look like to be a church that looked like the movement that Jesus started and not like church that we know in America today? Now, right, so I guess Jesus back in the day really wanted people to have a brewery, drink tons of beer, and give to Planned Parenthood so people could have abortions. It's guy. Kind of, I mean... All the scholars we've had over the years really missed the ball. Of that consistent questioning came this model for a brewery church that generates funds for local charities. All about local charities, though. There you go. Christopher Hall is the pastor. Give him the word with a colon by, by his side. This is like, is that, okay, so I guess this is the church. Does it, does it look suspiciously just like a bar that has the stage that you used to use for music is saying, like, hey, guys, let's put a, like a podium there and make this a church so we can go nonprofit. Is that kind of like what it looks like to you? Because it really looks like just a bar with a little corner area for a dude to, you know, sing or give a spoken word and have people clap afterwards. We are open and affirming LGBTQ. Uh, we are feminist and I believe Jesus was too. We are. I guess it depends on what you would mean by feminists, like probably for sure equality and, and, you know, first, second wave feminism, third wave feminism. I think they'd have a problem with a few parts of the New Testament. Uh, yeah, and as far as affirming, I've not been to a church that ever turns away people because they're homosexual or whatever. Never seen it. Never happened. There's specific teaching in the Bible about how to live your life in this world and have fences to guide you in the best possible way to live and the purpose of Jesus Christ. But I've never seen just because a church doesn't affirm your actions doesn't mean they'd turn you away. It's like, you know, the church doesn't turn people away because they've had an affair or got a divorce or anything like that. But they're not going to be up on stage praising you for doing it. So I don't know really what they're talking about. I hate when they frame churches as like, oh, they hate you know, anyone that's LGBT or what, LGBTQ plus or whatever, uh, haven't seen that happen yet. Our environmentalist, which I believe that's the original mandate of, of uh, the children of God. That was the original the mandate, we, really? We all know and enjoy. We are anti-war, which I believe okay, Jesus was too. We are <laughs> anti-war. That One of the last commandments of Jesus was to sell a cloak and have a sword so you could defend yourself and others. But, you know, we'll, we'll skip over that. And then also, whenever you have a pastor say, I, 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 like I feel, I want, I, I, I do, that's a, usually a worrisome thing. The, the Bible is what you go to to make sure all the pastors are in line. And uh, I always suggest people don't listen just to one pastor. Listen to multiple ones and go to the Bible because people are corrupt and they often use the Bible to justify their own beliefs and their actions for any type of gain. Are all for racial justice, which Jesus was a Palestinian Jewish rabbi. He was a person of color that was killed by white supremacy. So we're <laughs> usually making every effort. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So apparently, because apparently this, this scholar discovered that Jesus was really killed because of white supremacy, which apparently was a thing, you know, 2000 years ago. Uh, you know, I guess, I mean, you know, Roman rule, maybe you could say it was Italian supremacy or something, but I'm pretty sure Jesus was killed for political and religious motivated reasons. Uh, the religious elites there and also the political uprising going on. So uh, to say that he was killed because of right white supremacy is ridiculous. I also hate when people bring race into Christianity at all. The, the, the Bible never talks about being for a specific religion or a specific race of people or whatever. And I've never been to a church that said, hey, we're going to worship this guy, Jesus, because he's white. Because no one ever has ever said Jesus is white. He's obviously, he's always been and always will be Jewish. So it's just insane to me that people try to drive a wedge like that because of white supremacy and the dumbest they were ever. ...to be on the front lines for racial yeah. justice. So that's what but sets check mark us on the uh, progressive the box. Going on for five years strong, huh? 
And it's doing well, expanding. Yeah, they have plans not to increase outreach and ministries around the world. We're going to make the brewery into a full-blown restaurant. Whoa, the Lord's great, isn't he? <laughs> hey, but, but by the way, we'll also talk about Jesus. Church services will also still happen, but it's going to be an awesome bar. Why can't we do a brewery and then we can use the space on Sunday before it opens to the public as a worship? Yeah, it's just a bonus. We'll just use it as a place of worship on Sundays, just as a, as a bonus. By the way, I feel like I'm hating on, like, brew, breweries or alcohol or whatever. No, not, not at all. I love love me some beers, love love breweries. I just don't like when you're trying to use it as almost like a marketing scheme that it's a church, and this is why you should go buy beer from here. Space, And then we can use the funds to give to local charities that people of all faiths, all sexual, all racial, uh, and even all faith identities can support. So yeah, every, everyone's invited, we, man. We came up with this model oh, and we found an awesome spot. Consequently, happens to be right below Planned Parenthood in Santa Cruz, which we adore and support their efforts for giving health care to women. Yeah, you love and support efforts. So for someone that's supposed to be listening to Jesus Christ, I wonder how Jesus would feel about what Planned Parenthood does, because it seems like every scripture in the Bible is saying that life is going to be difficult. You got to pick up your cross daily. And, and carry it, and you're going to sacrifice yourself for the sake of others. And I feel like Planned Parenthood is just the opposite, because Planned Parenthood is literally sacrificing the life of someone else for you, for your own gain, for your own, for your own purpose, for your own desires. You're going to sacrifice a life for that. So that seems like the absolute opposite of what Jesus Christ would preach, and you're funneling money directly into it, so that seems absolutely ridiculous to me. It's like a really diverse diversity center, doesn't it? Yay! A lot of diversity that the despite to be talking about. This is not a gimmick at all to grow a huge, you know, six flags over Jesus like Gosh. we've got in every city in what America. A this man. is uh, just to do good work locally. That's just wonderful. Yeah, I whew, blows my mind that, that this kind of stuff is taking off, and uh, you know. I guess it's what I, what the Bible always says too. There's there's wisdom in many wise counselors, not just one. And specifically, if you're going to be the leader of a church and a congregation and trying to bring people closer to Jesus, you would hope that your uh, teachings would be more in line with His. But you know, we'll see how this goes. All right, see you guys. All right, so if you enjoyed that video, please consider becoming a premium member to the Rebel. That way, you have first access to Pure Hollywood and the entire Rebel lineup.